Weave, Protoss. <clears throat> and Zalai, Zerg, Izu spawning in the bottom right position. It's going to be a, a right versus left, left versus right. And in the bottom left, we have Wave. Or is it? No, Kenzie, sorry. Kenzie. That's what you get. Two sh 50 shades of white. And we have TT1 in the top left corner. He seems like he prefers to pick red. So let's see what we got this time. We have double Protoss. And as we can see from the previous game, it did not work out that well for TT1 or uh, Kemsi. But this is an island map, so I think that kind of favors double Protoss. Correct. I, I, I agree with that. I think, um... I think the same thing, like, uh, so the last game they kind of went in, like, reverse, right? Like, one tech and another one econ. I think double P here, strong is, uh, double econ. But gateway is going to be made from Kenzi and TT1, so it's not going to be double econ. Uh, so this is probably going to be double tech. I... What do you think about this, uh, the, the Nightfall opening? Um, sure, you, you get Mutas out. A little bit quicker, but you're up against two provinces, so I'm not sure if I like it. I would like an like a kind of like an eco oh, build. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know me, man. I'm drone man when I'm Zerg. For me, uh, and you know, unlike some Zergs that don't like this map, to me, this is a um, a, a fine map for Zerg. A fine map, especially if you've ever made Hive and Nidus's on this map. Um, could be very powerful. So to me, it's not favorable for Terran. It's most favorable for Protoss, and then Zerg is secondary. So to me, um, against double P, I would go for like a three hatch, something wild like that, like a three hatch. Before. We have we have double Nexus. Oh, double Hopefully, Econ. There you um, go. Yeah. Okay. So and they're making the deal out to kill the gas. I think this is a great build from the red team, and because they know uh, if, if the mutas are out fast, they just need to make a couple of cannons. They won't right. need that much defense. Right. That's one of the strong side of being Protoss. It's, it's it's a hard race to kill because your static defense is so strong, and right. <laughs> in the early games, the Zerg units are so weak. So I think Wave is going to have quite the surprise when he flies over with his first Corsair seeing double Nexus and yep. no tech. Yep. Yeah, they, they might be thinking it's just uh, it's just Kenzie that's going Econ, not both Protosses. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like you said, that, that, that's what makes Protoss the favorite on this map because you're able to go an economic opener and tech and defend at the same time. All three. No other race can do that on this map easily. Like Terran, it's a little bit harder. You gotta make turrets and stuff. Um, but Protoss, it's it's a little bit more seamless to be able to do all three. Look at this, we have having double gate from TT1. Defensive. I, I think the gateways are more of a defensive posture. Um, so if Protoss was not going Corsair and going like Reaver or something, it gives them more units to be able to defend against Muta and Reaver and stuff. Um, Kenzie's a little bit further away from Wave. He's bottom left versus TT1 who's close to the Wave. So like the shuttle with like four Z-Lots, it's, if that was coming, it, it'd go to TT1. Uh, the propensity of that is higher. Um, so he's kind of preparing for that thing. I think that was pur purposeful to make that second. Yeah, game. I saw the, the core of TT1 was spinning. Do you think it's plus one or is it range? Like you said, it's defensive uh, gateways. Probably range. Yeah, range yeah. and then Robo. Range Robo, Forge. Yeah, they, they're going patient in this game, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That means. So it, it kind of puts the onus on the blue team to get something done with these mutas, right? So because Izu is going for a faster layer, which means faster muta, um, he needs to, he's going to have less drones, less econ. He's going to have to try to get something done. And then the question is, is Wave going to continue to make Corsairs against two gate and then seeing Kenzie here. Kenzie's not really showing much. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he saw that Stargate, but he saw the core spinning. So that, that, that would be a question that they need to answer if they haven't already. Yeah, exactly. Now we see it's, it's he, he's taking the, yeah, should we call it the third gas this time? Kind of doing a little bit of off, off, opposite of what he was doing the last game. Yep. Um, I was looking oh, nice at time in here. I 
as, as you saw earlier on the chat, they were asking where is Kitty One and where is Kenzie, and the Kenzie is the bottom at the bottom. So they realized that he's good at saving money, so they want to like economically, economically damage Kenzie as much as they can early on. But you can see that's no stopping Kenzie. He still has 200 minerals. Yeah. Yeah, this is, could be GG. I mean, this could be GG, because the Stargate is not going to do anything for him, because Waves already got four Corsair, and yeah, that's only so one hard. gate. It's only one gate. It's only one gate, it's and it's not a great up. move in the blue team, realizing that, obviously, Kenzie is the strongest player of the two, so they want to take him out as fast as they can, and TP1 can do anything, because he kind of optioned the the other way around to play a more defensive style and take it to the to the mid game or maybe even long game. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Someone someone was asking in the chat here earlier as well, uh, since this is a rematch or a tie, if it should not be uh, the same races. But Kenzie has been playing random, so it's only fair that he's been playing random again in the other games. Or unless it would be giving the blue team an advantage of knowing that he is there. Exactly, or, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's more okay. about, think about it more about like the perspective of Izu and Wade, right? Like yeah. it loses that variability. It's like, what are they? Oh, they're double P. Look at this jumping on top of those cannons. So this is great oh, yeah. play from Izu and Wade is supporting him real well with the Corsairs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I don't know, can see maybe, yeah, let me see again, I was uh, uh, thinking that the 9 pool was a bad opening, but like you don't need to make any circlings when you take the third guess, so you can right, get up from right. here to Yeah, it was an optimized, well, I was going to say that too, um, so so here, two goon timing on wave from TT1, <laughs> but reverse done. A little annoying here, but Kenzie's gonna be dead. You know, this is too much to bear. But um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's that's the point I wanted to make too. Like last game, we know that he went over pull, and that's why TT1 had success because his timing with the Corsairs was faster, and the Mutas and Scourge weren't out the way that they usually would had he went like more of a traditional nine pool uh, layer timing. In this case, he did, and you can tell the timing of those Mutas and Scourge, they're a lot faster. So the give and take is you're gonna have faster mute if you go nine pool, but you're gonna have less econ. So that's why it, it it puts the onus on the Zerg to get stuff done. In this game, he got a lot done. He killed Kenzie. He accompanied that with the Corsairs from Wave. TT1 getting some stuff done here with the goons, but this is so many mutas now. It's like yeah, he has too many mutas, and he even picked off two shots right there. So now TT1 yeah. is stuck in the space again. Yeah. GG. GG. <clears throat> Yeah, we both kind of liked the double econ style from the, the PP team, um, but I think what threw them off was 